fights, punishing Usyk for pushing too far, playing too far aggressive. And then, as we got later and later in this game, and we started to see that hesitation from Usyk, that's when UQ almost started to take ground back. However, and this is very critical, Usyk still gave up zero dragons, zero barons, like, they still got every single neutral objective. And until UQ can start grabbing those, we're going to see a proper series. Like, we're going to see a Usyk series, I'm sorry, trying to say. You know what's even bigger than all of that combined? What? It's the second game Sen has lost in this tournament. Ooh, big, big, big thanks. The stats yeah. are gone down. Yeah, look, Senna's not that overpowered pick anymore. And after that game, you kind of going to be looking at Echo like, hold on a sec, maybe that's where we should be focusing. Uh, both these teams have decided to stay on the same side. So I find that interesting uh, in this one. Um, that means UQ has actually opted to stay on the blue side, as we're going to see Morgana banned away from the Zoot. So a bit of adjustment. Um, bans coming out in this one. Still a lot of those power picks available. Cassiopeia is going to be taken away from a middle. We've seen a middle dude discussing things on that champion. Still leaves the Echo up. Still leaves the Senna up. Still leaves Yumi up. There's so many power picks still available. And UQ, they have the pick of the litter. And they take the Senna. So even though the, you know, the second loss coming out there... Uh, they're you know opting for it. I think they're they're comfortable. In reality, Farmer played very well on center. Um, Clint played very well. Not Clint. Uh, Farmer played that very well and was dominant at points. You sit immediately locks in that counter. You know the the hot box combo that only really went off once. But I do worry for UQ here that currently this is looking like a little bit of you know. A bit of a repeat. They're sort of repeating slightly. Run it back. Run it back. Yeah, they're running it again. Back. Run it back. Run it back. Although this time we are going to see a different jungler, perhaps as Scott is hovering yeah. the wreck side. We've seen Scott actually have success on the wreck side before, but no, we're going to go back to that same bot lane at the moment. So the Senamalkai, the response to the misfortune. Uh, I imagine that will be going on revenge. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. So it still is technically a flex pick. We still could see Clint on it. Now, Clint had a couple moments on the Urgot, but overall, I have to say he was once again a bit outclassed by Zorna. So maybe he will opt for the safety of the weak side top laning tank. We'll see as this picks and bans moves forward. And now we're seeing a Scott classic pick, the Lee Sin locked in. Yeah, and it's good to see just a really hard champion go like really hard engaged champion as we see the band that went out last time where they replaced the morgana the bard has been picked up as bard is one of those ridiculously good uh supports especially looking at usage team comp look at what they've got they've got the misfortune the javan and the bard that is asking for a wombo combo not only is it asking for a wombo combo but it's also asking for a roaming support with a jungler that can really punish any lane that's caught out of position so i expect to see forward and udisoft working together hand in hand in this one already and especially when you're against a bot lane like this Senna Maokai, i feel like misfortune should be able to safely farm in that kind of situation if left on her own and that's opening the door for a lot more roaming plays, and we already know already used it's going to want to roam, they're going to want to invade, they're going to want to challenge Scott. They've done it once before, I see no reason why they won't do it again. Yeah, I can see that they're, you know, they're just going to try challenge him. I think that he's on a better pick this time, and that he has a better chance of actually being able to duel pretty efficiently, so I like the Lee Sin pick to sh shut that off. Yeah, I mean, the Lee Sin is also going to be an aggressive jungler, and I do kind of feel Lee Sin has that faster clear and might have a better early game impact. But you're not going to have that roaming support help. So it's very, very critical, I feel, for UQ right now to actually get lanes with proper lane advantages this time so that Scott will have a bit more help uh, if he gets invaded time and time again. Granted, that sometimes UQ actually were able to turn it around, but then suddenly they weren't able to as it got later into that game. So I'm very curious what sort of solo lanes we're going to see. I know what we won't be seeing, and that's another Urgot or another Azir. A bit surprised to see that Urgot ban, actually, as Zornos, I thought, handled the Urgot pretty well. Zoot going to take another supporty mid laner with the Thomas, um, with the Orianna. I was going to say, moments before when I mentioned the Wombo combo, I was going to say all they're missing is the Orianna, and they've got a combo down, and what do you know, they picked it up. So I'm really liking Usid's hard team fight comp, as we may have the LeBlanc getting picked up for UQ. Never mind. If it ain't broke, why fix it? I mean, both the LeBlanc and the Echo are going to be used to do something very similar in this, which is going to be more flank, more cleanup plays coming out of a middle. That's what he likes to do. It was very successful game number one. And Nasus Hover, I mean, we made a joke about that the first time. I think that's going to be a little nod to us. I doubt to see that Nasus get locked in, but you never know. He's 
Also, another strong weak side top laner that turns into a massive split push threat. That was something Yuki was lacking in this first game. So there is a world where it gets locked in, and there you have it. Nasus going up to Clint. Biggest brain caster. <laughs> <laughs> the joke turns out to be a reality as, ooh, that could be a very interesting pick. The poppy could be, actually, the poppy would be a very good pick here. Oh my gosh, I know. There's someone who I was trying to convince to watch this series, but he's like, oh no, no, I'm going to play D&D &D instead. And he's a top laner who mains Nasus and Kled, and I bet you he is very, very sad right now because that's going to be a banger of a top lane matchup. I am excited to see what <laughs> one Zarnos can do on this Kled. Again, he has not lost a lane all tournament long, and he's going to be in position yet again to probably win yet another. Do we see the bot lane Nasus now? It's starving Senna, so it makes sense. They can free farm on the Nasus from day dot and not have to worry about Zoranis poke. Especially with Bard going ahead and probably going to be going out of lane to ward. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You're going to be leaving a Nasus on its own in that bot lane. Maokai is probably going to be better suited to survive Zarnos engages. This is a really smart pick and ban phase coming from UQ right now, but... Similar to the first game, it's not as if Yusid is at a disadvantage here. They're going to have that early game pressure. They're going to have those early game leads. Once again, the ball is going to be in the court of um, Yusid to finish this game before the most scaling bot lane in League of Legends history is allowed to do just that. Yeah, they're pretty much... Bot lane is a ticking time bomb, and it's a stop clock. Uh, that's just going to say every minute we get further in this game is a percentage that we lose this game. And it's just going to tick, tick, tick up and up whilst you get the Senna and the Nasus just free farming bot lane. And if you get to that, you know, that that mass point at 45 minutes, 40 minutes, you're just gonna lose because Nasus is just gonna run at you, no care to the world, and you are donezo. This is gonna be a very, very interesting game because UQ they're doubling down on the late game. I think they saw that first game and recognized, you know what, if we had a team more suited for these late game fights to actually punish as we get later, you know, something like a Nasus instead of an Urgot, hey, we probably win that game. We know how to snowball. We know how to delay. You said couldn't finish on us, so let's let's double down. Let's go all in for this late game strategy, and I like that from UQ, that adaptation. It's interesting because Yusid went the opposite way. They went more aggressive with their comp. They're like, okay, we couldn't really finish it out last time. Yeah, some of our early skirmishes didn't go our way. Let's double down on that. Let's make sure we win these early fights. And this is going to be a very fascinating game. It's going to definitely be interesting to see who can do what. Because like you said, I agree that I think that UQ looked at that game and went, wow, we actually turtled a lot more efficiently than we thought. Imagine if we had a champion who could use that turtle and become out 10,000 times stronger than he was. So that that Susan pickup in the bot lane is just going to mean that that's a free farming Nasus in a bot lane. Uh, so you're not going to have to worry about the, you know, Zoranis and Udisoft cheese. Uh, and as the game progresses, you're just going to get more and more fed. But at the same time, though, you still got to worry about the Zoranis and Udisoft because into that Maokai in the top lane, I kind of feel like they're going to have free reign up there. And that could be punishing. I think a middle is going to have to be very cautious in this game. Yes, you're on LeBlanc, and that is a tough one to pick, take down. I think that's the reason why we set the LeBlanc instead of the Echo. It's a bit harder to gank a LeBlanc. But if a middle is caught out of position, and all of a sudden Zarnos and Udisoft starts rolling through the top half of the map, that could spell disaster, and we might not even get to that late game. That said, though, we are on the Rift. This is a one-game advantage. Grand final point, essentially, for you, Sid, is if they win this, they are in that grand final against the University of New South Wales. A lot on the line as we kick off for our second game in this best of three. Yeah, and I think this is going to be a very, very interesting game to see as we see the double corruption, uh, corrupting pot pickup for UQ, you know, obviously going for that sustaining uh, lane as Senna, you know, traditional starving Senna. So this is going to be an interesting game, and I think that UQ is in an interesting position. I think they definitely have a team comp that can work, but it is a Nusid's ball. It's a Nusid's court. Uh, yeah. I think they're definitely at the... They've got the momentum on their side, and it's their game to lose. 
Yeah, definitely. It will be Yusit's game to lose, especially with that early pressure that we're, they're going to be looking to establish. You have that roaming, invade style that they have essentially picked around in this one. That Bard J4 combo is going to be huge, and already they're looking to pick up where they last left off and sort of invading against Scott, already looking to take some buffs away and put this Lee Sin on the back foot. Yeah, the, if you could put Lee Sin on the back foot, yes, he is an aggressive jungler, but he can't win from behind infinitely. You know, he needs to be competitive. Like, yes, his early duels are great, but he can't afford to be super far behind because it's just going to make it hard for him to really, uh, you know, make his presence known on the map. So I like that he's opted for the, you know, uh, top side jungle. Uh, Stepped into the ward. Ooh, he, he stepped step into the ward, so he's going to be spotted, so we know we got some horizontal jungling coming down in this one. That's okay, though, because at least this time Scott won't get triple buffed, uh, so he should be happy with that. Granted, I believe he got his buffs back with the kill that he got last game. Either way, though, a bit more comfortable start, really, for the jungler from the UQ side. Yeah, definitely more comfortable. It is unfortunate that that ward did spot him out and that he was able to... Uh, you know, they were able to know that the vertical jungling was going on. But what that does mean, however, is that we're going to see some interesting pathing because right now there's no real way for Ubisoft to get into that top lane to punish Clint right now. So he knows he's safe to do this. He's safe to push in under tower with no threat to him because Zoranis can't 1v1 him with that wave right there right now. So he no. is in a very good spot. No, he can't, but for how long? The second that wave does crash into the tower, things can turn around, and Zoranos has actually did a pretty good job of freezing the lane in that position. Udi's off instead, though, is looking at mid lane, and we saw, saw a middle go in. This could be a bit of a dangerous situation. Flag and drag forces out the flash, so no flash on LeBlanc, and Udi's off is still going to chase. You have Scott currently at that mid tower. He's going to jump to the Raptors to provide support, but Udi's off has already backed off. Yeah, so they get the flash out of the middle there, which is unfortunate for him. Uh, but they, they trade Flash on Jarvan for Flash on LeBlanc. At the end of the day, LeBlanc has many a Flash built into her kit, whereas Jarvan only has one. So we're not going to see any Flash, Flag, and Drags if need be uh, in the next couple minutes. No, we will not at this stage. However, we still might see a Flag and Drag as a middle looking to engage on Udisoft. Scott is here, but the Flag and Drag connects with both. Teleport is coming out. I believe that is Clint joining the fight, but First Blood has already been secured by Scott. Zoot is the one in trouble, has no mana. Burn Slash, but Scott is on the hunt. And this is the start that Scott was looking for. Gonna go ahead and punch the ground, get the double kill. UQ is on the board. And that is what we wanted to see from, from Scott. We talked about that hyper-aggressive, you know, strong dueling play style that he has and he's doing it and that's what we love to see he's got that two kills he's put booty soft and zoop behind now so he is in a very good position and this is the scott we've seen in the past absolutely and this is very very scary for the usage side because their team is so reliant on getting a hot start and just sort of snowballing the game but if Udisoft is behind this future roams that this team wants to do are going to be less and less effective and that's just going to help this game get later and later off further enable this Senna Nasus bot lane. This is a fantastic start for UQ, and the question is how long can they hold on to this lead for? Yeah, it's a matter of how long they can hold that. If they can accentuate that and they, you know, currently from what we were aware of, ooh, Zoranus, never mind, Clint can be 1v1 by Zoranus early. Under mm -hmm. tower even, so um, that's not a good start. What I was going to say was UQ are going for a turtle strat in reality. They know that Usid wants to go hard and fast, whereas UQ can stall out the game and the longer it goes on, the better. So to have them getting that two kill advantage early is really positive because it means that they can actually get an advantage as early as possible. Yeah, that said though, you said, you know, they're still trying to find their ways into this one. As things were happening, again, that solo kill for Zornos, quite huge and starting to push things in their favor. And you can see Udisoft right now was trying to bait UQ to go a bit too deep. We're waiting for this flag and drag, but Scott is here. So they're going to really need to bust Farmer down. He'll already use as Scott joins the fight, but Zoot is also arrived. Udisoft still so low. Scott tries to get the kill, but Udisoft is able to stay standing. Teleport coming through. That is Zornos joining the fray. So all five members of Usid down below, but those health bars are low and a middle is waiting in the wings looking for an opening. Thomas Shen very, very low. Despite the heal from forward, he is still in a lot of strife right now. A good brute on the play and that actually could be forward going down. Scott goes for the tower dive, tries to flash away. The tower shot is not enough to bring him down. Zeus is going to help scare him off this one. But Usid is on the retreat and there is a Cloud Dragon available. 
that was close, but no cigar, unfortunately, for Scott. That was a very, very, uh, you know, aggressive dive there. Potentially try, you know, trying to get that kill. And look at the health bars. Shen and forward, ridiculously low. Oh, no. Oh, Clint is not getting out of this one alive, I would have to think. Look how many shields Zornos has as he charges in. Not to mention the sheer amount of damage he's able to put down as yeehaw! Clint gonna get him some trees today! Down goes Clint and another solo kill for Zornos. Yeah, good solo kill there for Zor uh, Zoranus. You know, this is the threat we have now. Is we mentioned that, you know, they've got a safe lane uh, top laner in Clint. You know, he can he's got that losing lane safety. But when you're pushing up like that into a Kled, that's not where you want to be because you aren't going to beat him in the one v one. Kled just has way too much damage, especially a 2-0 Kled now. Yeah, and this is what Usid was going to be hoping for. They're starting to get this lead back in their advantage. Scott can only be in one half of the map at a time, and he has opted to help out the scalers, it looks like, as Kled already two solo kills in this one. Zarnos doing what he's been doing all tournament and just winning lane after lane. You said, though, they're going to need more than just a fed Kled, as we've mentioned before. They're going to have to end this game as fast as possible. So I want to see how Zoranos is going to start to use this advantage he's accrued for himself. Yeah, how he's going to be able to push this advantage as far as he can, because it's one of those things where if he can get that advantage going, uh, he can counteract Scott, he can counteract that hard engage from the side of UQ. And well, look, we can just see the damage that he's able to put out. For I put a bear trap on a rope and I caught me a tree, says Zarno, says he's continuing to just harass Clint again and again. I'm going to stop the accent now, okay? I, I had to do it a couple times. It's fun. It's fun to go full redneck every now and then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> yeah, Clint is, Clint is an interesting character. We'll say that. He's great. I he hate amazing. him so much. <laughs> I, I look... Okay, I, when you're bad at top lane and you go up against a Kled, it's just like, well, my life is terrible now. And that's hey, just how it is. That's just how it is. What, you don't like the High Major Commodore of the First Legion, Third Municipal, Double Admiral, Artillery, Vanguard, Company, Kled? Actually, like, you know what? No, 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 no. I do like Kled. Kled is great. I cannot stand Skarl. <laughs> yeah. I what? cannot stand a Skarl. How Skarl is want? the one who haunts my dreams. But oh, look because... at little dopey eyes. He's just, having, he's just vibing. Yeah, he's so dopey when he comes out of nowhere to once again give Kled half of his health back. So as you're about to get that kill, turning, you know, a great situation into a terrible one. Speaking of which, Farmer just doing a lot of damage forward right there, forcing the magical journey through the wall. Yeah, forcing that out. You know, I, th I think the Kled hate's a little unnecessary. I think that, you know, well, Skull, I mean, I think Skull's just vibing. You know, he's just chilling out, hanging with his, hanging with his best bro. So uh, he's a coward. Why does he <laughs> run away? He's a coward. When Tristana brings her dragon friend around, he doesn't run away. That's true. I, yeah. I don't think he could. <laughs> Even true. if he wanted to, I don't think he could. With those stumpy and little legs. Uh, Scott starting up the dragon. Yeah, speaking of dragons, Scott's going to go ahead and start this one up. Farmer's going to provide him support. Bot lane priority in favor of UQ will mean a cloud Drake going to the UQ side. And that's actually the first neutral objective they're going to get this entire series. So a nice little gain for UQ. It comes at the cost of the Rift Herald, however, which will be picked up by Udisoft. Probably going to be used to try and crack this top tower down to help free Zarnos elsewhere on the map, I would have to imagine. You can see already Udisoft is pushing into that jungle, looking to invade a little bit as we've hit slow motion. Yeah, we've hit the slow-mo cam of the uh, tower that's about to fall down. Oh. So, oh. oh. oh All right, we're just going a through warp of, yeah. drive right now, and we're back. And yeah, yeah, sorry, I just I just came on the, you know, I appeared on the camera real quick. That was my true form. Ah, uh, there so. you are. What, you're, you're, you're Shelly? That was just the Shelly summoning ritual. It was a bit more ambitious than normal because they knew it was going to take out that tower. And, First tower will go over to the side of Usid. More gold going to Zarnos on this Kled. That's going to be a completed Titanic Hydra as well as some pots and wards at just under 11 minutes. So Zarnos really feeling himself in this one. Yeah, unfortunately, I think the camera glitched out there and we got to see a glimpse into the void where Shelly comes from, um, which no, uh, no, no mortal should see. So we're going to see them getting back into this as if we look just everywhere i will be i will admit though clint has actually managed to keep his cs 
up with Zoranis relatively well. Oh, but here comes that big team fight engage. A great ultimate from Ford will catch Scott, but the flag and drag won't be able to hold him in place. A timely ward hop plus a flash gets Scott out of danger. And that was actually a lot of ultimates burned for no reward. Yeah, they didn't really get anything from that, unfortunately. They nearly caught out Zoot there, which would have been really good for... Uh, not Zoot, uh, a middle there, I believe it was. But unfortunately, wasn't able to get anything there. Um, and we're going to get a, a reset here. Uh, Udisoft going to take those uh, Raptors away from Scott, as Scott is going to go for this botline gank. Yeah, Scott is going to be looking for a play, but he's got to be quick on it because you can see that one Udisoft is making his way down there as well as we watch a middle farm instead of all the action happening. Hello, farmer. Run! Get there in time! Zoot's running there as well. Everyone's running. Here's the action, and it's actually Riven. She's quite low on the other side. However, Zornos is holding Clinton pace. He tries to flash out, but Zornos on the hunt after him. Scott goes way too deep and is forced to try to jump away, but here comes the shockwave. Here comes the bear trap, and there is the shutdown going to Zornos as the bot lane siege will continue for Yusuf. Yeah, they're just going to siege this tower down, and there's not much they can do, unfortunately. They're just going to... Oh, they're going to keep chasing! Rivage might be the next one to go down, and this is the over-aggressive playstyle Yusid likes, but it's Gorkin in their favor. At least momentarily, a nice route does catch both Zarnos and Zoot, but the damage isn't there for UQ to turn it around. Yeah, unfortunately for UQ, there, they just had, they had no way of catching that out, uh, which is really unfortunate for them, because that could have gone very well, as we have Yusid hanging around the corner, in the off chance that UQ gets a little to uh, this. Yeah, I mean, UQ, they're trying to get back, they're trying to protect that tower, but Yusid's still hanging around, and they've got to be careful because that is a flanking teleport coming from Rivinch. You also have Scott starting to arrive on the scene as well. Thomas Shen's going to try to get there, but he needs to be careful because that is a misfortune on her own. Meanwhile, back underneath the tower, you can see that is where the rest of Yusid has retreated, and UQ, they establish pressure once again around this dragon, but dragon's not spawning for another minute and a half. Yeah, it's not going to be spawning for a little bit while, uh, little, yeah, little blue buff now, so... Yeah, let, let's push for that blue buff. Unfortunately, Farmer's not going to be able to root anyone in place, but it doesn't look like Yusuf's going to want to turn this around, or are they? You can see Zarl Udisoft, he was poking at it, but not going to be able to protect his blue buff as Scott steals it away. Yeah, unfortunately, they're not going to be able to get that there, but at the end of the day, it was, you know, a good pickup by Scott there to steal that away. Forcing that away from Zoot means that you know, they're going to have a little bit safer. They're not going to have to worry about a, you know, constant spam of uh, one-shotting abilities coming out of Zoot. He does have the uh, Shockwave available to him now. So when this dragon comes up, I think we might see potentially a big fight. Yeah, that could be the case right now, although I'm not sure how willing UQ is going to be will to take that fight. Granted, both of the star players of each of these teams are sitting comfortably with three kills, three on Scott, three on Zornos as well. However, the difference is Yusid has a bit more of that early game priority at this stage, and UQ, they're not really should be putting themselves in that position to throw it away just yet. I feel like you can give this dragon over by getting that first Cloud Drake. You've extended the time of the Dragon Soul when those fights are actually going to be in play. And unless you sit does something really over aggressive and you punish them for it, no need to fight over dragons you do not need at this stage. Yeah, if you have no oh, need... But speaking of going in too deep and getting caught out forward, that's jumped upon, but Scott actually is the one who is going to fall as the rest of you, Sid, was there. And with no jungler available, you think you, Sid, should be able to back away and secure themselves this dragon. UQ, though, still looking to punish, maybe get Udisoft low, but they're not going to commit too much to it. Udisoft's going to go ahead, flag and drag, get on that Ocean Drake as forward, and Zoot, zone the rest of UQ away. Yeah, zone them away. Uh, that's really unfortunate, as this is pretty much a free Drake going over to you, Sid. Um... So that's going to start their scaling off. As we have, again, the Infernal is going to be what the Soul is going to be this game. Both teams, if they can get that, imagine a five-man shockwave with Infernal Soul. I mean, that could be something that happens in this game. These next few dragons, you have to think, are going to go Usid's favor. Uh, just because UQ, again, they're playing such a late game comp right now, it's going to be a fair while before they're going to be able to contest these. Yeah, it's going to be a while because, like you said, Yusid has gone for that hard early game, like comp, whereas UQ has gone for a turtling, you know, late game scaling comp. So as long as they can keep this out and, you know, stall for long enough, I think they'll be okay. But the longer, th the more they fight early, the worse off they're going to be, I think. 
I, I do agree, and to Yuki's credit, they've actually done a great job in sort of lowering their body count compared to the first game. However, you said they're going to start to get more and more aggressive, I feel, as their window is starting to peak right now. You can already see, here comes the Udizov forward roaming gang squad. They're starting to move together. They're starting to look at these objectives together, looking to pick up that Rift Herald. You have forward going ahead and zoning things away, not to mention Zoot there to provide backup as well. So it's going to be really hard for Yuki to push into this right now as they're kind of bottled just behind that wall at the river. Rift Herald should be secured by Yusid as down below Zarnos has taken towers. Yeah, he's taken towers, they're taking heralds, and at this point they're in a very, very good spot. And this is what we expected from Yusid. They played this team comp, they're expecting to pop Herald right here, get that mid tower, potentially get a kill if Revenge doesn't back off. Yeah, and well, I think they're going to get the tower, but we also might see the play because the middle is looking for that flank. In he goes. His target will be Zoot, but there's enough protection there to kind of force a middle back. Not going to be happy with that one as another tower will fall in favor of Yusid, and they have gotten three towers, all the tier ones down, before losing one themselves. Yeah, and actually, really, uh, you know, really confident there from Zoot not to even move the second that a middle shows up he's he just no I know my team will got has got me and just continues the back there <laughs> doesn't even worry about the potential impending doom from a uh, a LeBlanc no I mean why would you have to you do have forward standing right next to you and big cuddly bard you just want to give him a big old hug and why would you move away from that so things looking very promising for Yusid right now they're starting to grow their lead Obviously, the big question will be, are they growing it enough? When are they really going to start accelerating things? They still have some time. I mean, we don't even have Baron in play yet. We're still several dragons away from that dragon soul. So, you said they're sitting comfortable, a little bit of pressure, but nothing too crazy. A middle actually could be in a bit of trouble right now, as he was briefly surrounded, but was able to jump out of that one safely. Udisoft potentially looking for something off the back end. Did it drop the flag and drag? Not going to find things. He's probably looking for a place to drop that eye at the moment, as that would provide more lane pressure and possibly continue to accelerate this Yusid lead. Yeah, if anyone, like, if they can keep doing that, ooh. Oh. Zoot could be in trouble, but that is going to get a teleport in that, and Scott and Clint are going to back away, and this is what I mean. UQ really do not want to fight, but with Zarnos charging after Clint, he might not have a choice. How did the bear trap miss? That was really awkward. The bear trap not actually connecting, and Zarnos, he's going to keep trying to push, probably get some poke damage down on Scott. Zoot as well sticking around and you can see that you should have control of that jungle They're also going to drop Rift Herald up top and that will give you know more of pressure on the bot side as well as in the mid lane as UQ They have to react to both of these threats right now It looks like they're going to commit more to the mid lane as in goes a middle But he does not get that damage down Udisov looking to turn it back around gets the flash out of Rivage Drops the Cataclysm on two and that is a massive hot box that is going to take this asset down A middle looking for the re-engage but has to be careful Is able to find Udisov on the back end but it's a one for one however the tower does fall the tower does full, but they do manage to get that kill there, which is nice. But in the bot lane, Zaranus is just going to be pushing that in. So whilst they may get one, you know, they might get a victory one part of the map, they're just losing in other parts. So even their, their victories right now are quite shallow. So they need to get some advantages stacking and fast. Otherwise, they might not be able to turtle this game. Absolutely, and I think for you said they're okay to give away a kill or two if it means taking these towers down, putting more pressure on UQ, getting them further and further on the back foot. It's all about speed right now for this Usid side, and yeah, sometimes, you know, when you go fast, a tire might fall off and sparks start shooting off your car, but if you cross that finish line first, it's all worth it. I've gone full NASCAR, I can't help it, I see a cled, it's, it's just in me. It's deep within my bones. Turn left, turn left! <laughs> but yeah, I think we're gonna see, effectively, Usid is gonna have to keep trying to do this, get, those, get these dragons, get these barons, get these advantages, if they do, it's going to be really hard for UQ to uh, to compete. However, if they're able to keep turtling like they're doing, they're itemizing quite well. If they just keep pushing this and, you know, maybe picking up a few kills here and there, I think they'll be in a much better spot. Middle still looking for picks, still trying to get really anything to sort of slow the bleeding. But they might need a bit more than that with this Infernal Drake. It's curious to see if UQ are going to offer this fight or give this one over. I still kind of feel as if UQ would probably be better off letting Yusid take this one and not throwing away a larger advantage. But if they can find a pick, you know they are going to go for it. So they are going to linger around. It's just going to be a very dangerous hover at this stage. 
Yeah, it's going to be a very dangerous hover because if they can get this, it'll be great for them. However, if they don't, it might be... Uh... Oh, they're going for the steal. They're not going to get it. Smite secured. And here comes a counter engage. What a grab right there for Yusin as they've already taken Farmer out of the fight. Rivage will fall as well as the magical journey actually was a bit too deep. But middle will take one right back as forward. Not sure what he was thinking there, but it's all okay for you, Sid, as they pick up three kills, and they're going straight for Baron. Yeah, they're going to go straight towards that Baron, because why wouldn't they? They've taken out the jungler, they've taken out the bot lane. What is there to worry about? They can head for this big purple worm, get the kill, and just head down whenever they want down the lane, because this is exactly where they want to be. That said, though, UQ might try and make a miracle steal right here in middle, trying to get some damage down onto Zoot, but has to back off. That Baron health has got to be low right now. Clint still trying to find a way in just under 3k. The steal attempt from Farmer not going to happen, but in middle still does so much damage. Nearly takes out Zoot, but it's not quite enough as Baron is secured by Yusin. Cataclysm comes down, but Ubisoft has to be careful. He's low. He flashes out of it. Drops a bit of a shield, but Zoot cannot save him from a middle. That said, it is two for one as a double kill goes over to Thomas Shen. Farmer is able to connect with the root. Revenge is here as well as as Scott, and they should be able to pick Zornos up. That said, if Scarl returns, this is why I hate him. The Shockwave actually buys some space, buys time, and Scarl returns to save the day. Somehow Zornos escapes. Somehow he miraculously escapes that. That was a big Shockwave too, as they nearly managed to get Zornos there, but unfortunately it was not meant to be, as he's just going to take that uh, Grump away from them, and they're in a, they're in a bad spot. Yeah, Yuki's in a very bad spot right now. Zoot once again making crazy plays happen with this Oriana, with these shockwaves. It was him who caught Farmer on the dragon fight, and it was him who saved Zaranos' life in that Baron pit. And now the siege will continue in that middle front. The tower will stand for now. And actually, you said they're going to try and back away from this one. I think they want to regroup as five before they continue that. Yeah, I think they know that if they. If they group 1v1, they might get picked off and they can lose, whereas they know that if they group as either 4 or 5, they're in a much better position, as it looks like Zoot is sort of hovering to push that top lane out, just trying to see where everyone is. So he's going to push that out, get that CS, and they're just going to go for the reset. Yeah, that will be the name of the game. I mean, they still have plenty of time to work with with this Baron, and if they can push these lanes even further, well, that's going to be the third Infernal Soul almost certainly going Usid's way. This gold lead has exploded in the past seven minutes or so, now pushing on 9k for Usid as they are continuing to accelerate their lead. And this is the Usid we are used to seeing. This is that suffocating Usid that takes small advantage after small advantage and turns it into dominating performances. The only difference I can see with Usid in this game so far, in the last two games even, um, is that Udisop hasn't played as big a role in the formation of, any, of the advantages. He ha that's not to say he hasn't been playing well, it's that he hasn't been a core reason for these advantages being created. For example, Zoranus has been able to create those 3-0 lead by himself effectively. So yeah, it's I mean, been a, yeah, it's been it's been an interesting game. There's a reason why I've been saying Zoranus has been the MVP of this league and not Udisoft, because he has just been so consistent each and every time and just like taking games over as bullet time is actually going to get the kill onto farmer. I don't think he was expecting that much damage off of the double tap and all of a sudden, UQ, they are an AD carry down, but Thomas Shen's a bit too deep. They could be going one for one as the Cosmic Binding is not going to connect, and Forward's going to have to walk away from that. Two AD carries will trade. Zarnos now in a 1v3 situation. Mr. Consistent, our MVP, how does he get out of this, especially with the middle arriving? But so does some help from Houston. That said, Zarnos has to go down now, but he goes down swinging. Cataclysm comes down, holding Scott and Clint in place, but Forward can only do so much from the other side of the wall. Eventually has to magical journey away, but that is three members of Houston giving away their lives for not much reward. While top lane, Zoot's just push, gonna try to push this in as hard as he can. Yeah, he's gonna try and do what he can, but he can only push for so long as Farmer arrives back on the scene, and Usid, once again in this series, things look good for them, but then they push too far, and I don't even think Zoot's gonna be able to get away from this one, not because of Farmer, but a middle coming on the flanks right now. He's gonna jump right through those minions, get so much burst damage down, there is no mana on this Orianna, and I believe they should give the kill over to Farmer, but he has to use an ultimate to do it. Yeah, so you know, they get the ultimate out, but Zoot does use the flash and the exhaust there to get it, but I like to try and get out, but unfortunately, you know, not where you want to be. Zoot trying to get any advantage he can in that top lane. Unfortunately, he had no mana. If he okay. had some mana, he might have been able to, you know, he had the ultimate, he had the abilities, he might have been able to make something of it. I but think 
I discovered the secret in how to um, turtle as UQ and how to beat UQ essentially. Just keep your gold lead at 5k. Don't go to 8k. You go to 8k, bad things start happening. So just keep your gold lead at about 5k and you beat UQ easy. But once again, as soon as UQ gets like 8, 9k down, they start to come back and come back fast. Oh yeah. They just... They just don't... <laughs> it's, a, it's a cursed number. That's all we can say. As oh. they're going to try and fight for this dragon. Yeah, so there it looks like that will be a dragon secured by UQ. And that just means more delaying, more stalling out for this UQ side. And they might actually be looking at a dragon soul now themselves as we get later and later into this one. That said, a big ultimate forces the flash out of Farmer. And you said they're still on the hunt. Take a look at Zornos. He still has his charge available. It's being used. Going to run right into Clint. The flash will come through, but so will the Cataclysm and so will the damage of the Usage side. Down goes Clint as the tree is once again chopped down. And that is a big frontline tool gone from UQ. That is an exposed inhibitor in the mid lane as well. And Usage is like, thank you very much. Yeah, they will happily take that. But even even though they managed to get it, uh, the dragon, Usid is just going to push this and take two inhibs for their trouble. You know, oh. hey, you can have an infernal. We're going to take two inhibs. Yeah, they might want more, but they're going to need to be careful. Scott is above them, and he's looking to cut off the retreats. That said, Farmer already chunked super low. Zoot's still looking for it. Not going to find it up above, however. Scott was able to help find a kill. Thomas Shen is once again gone, and that is Zoot on his own. That said, a middle's not going to want to stick around as the rest of you said was looking for that re-engage. Scott able to sidestep that bear trap on a rope, so Scott will be fine for now. Yeah, he'll they'll be fine for the moment, but... This this is, a, again, this is similar to the last one. Very back and forth almost. I do think that Usid is in a better position. But that being said, they are slightly... They're throwing away their victory. To, like, a middle is getting so many kills. Farm is getting kills. Scott is playing very well, actually. Getting those kills onto those carries. So the longer this goes on, you know, they managed to get those two inibs. Great, but that's exactly where Anasus wants to be. Yeah, but that's just it, though. Like, yes, the middle is playing well. Yes, Scott is playing well. But the LeBlanc and the Lee Sin are going to drop off. And at some stage, Farmer, Revenge, and Clint are going to have to take this game over. And we haven't seen that same Senna performance on Farmer that we saw in game number one so far in this one. And Revenge has really struggled on this Nasus. Granted, the Frozen Heart and the Trinity Force have been completed. So trying to duel this Nasus at, the, Nasus at this stage is going to be a challenge. Unless you have three completed items and your name is Zoranos and you are by far the most fed member in the game so far. Actually, that might not be true. Thomas Shen is still sitting on seven kills as well and can't be left alone. So I, I don't know. I feel like, yeah, UQ stay have their out there, have their way back in, but it still feels almost so far away for them. Yeah, I definitely agree that they have their ways. Oh, no. Well, this is Scott, and he's going to try to do what he can with what little time he has. It will be Zoot picking up the kill, and with no jungler available, that should be the second Baron going to the Usid side. Yeah, that was that was a, not a good pickoff for the University of Queensland trademark. They you know, still looking, <laughs> still yeah. looking for it. Um, as yeah, he'll be able to jump away from that. So yeah, Baron will be secured by the Usid side. Yeah, I can't see this being contested as they have to go back and get the uh, the minions uh, that are put into their base otherwise they just have a free lane to push with these baron empowered minions uh i think they're just gonna personally i think they're gonna reset uh get those items prep for the dragon that's coming up in a minute 30. um i don't even think they're gonna prep for that i think they might look to end you've Ooh. got two inhibs down and you've got baron empowered minions you have a 9k lead let's end this game don't risk another dragon fight <laughs> yeah don't even bother risking it like that's a problem where if they leave it longer to try get you know the soul the infernal that's where uq gets that lead if they can push right now go to that bot lane push that bot lane and take a third inhib and then just choke them out until they you know push it all the way down then they're in a better spot but if the longer they leave this the more time you're giving uq to get back into this absolutely and you said right now they're setting up what could be the final siege items were bought cooldowns are available and this is going to be a very, very tough defense for the University of Queensland. One that they're going to need to pull off successfully if they want to stay alive in this tournament. Udisoft already starting to get some damage down onto a middle. Clint already dropping his ultimate as well. Is only going to catch one member. That is forward, and that's not who you want. Here comes Udisoft going for the flank play. Does get forced to go golden. A nice ultimate right there from forward. Almost backfires, but 
That is still the kill picked up. Another one as well. A big Cataclysm Shockwave gets the third. And that should do it for the University of Sydney. They will get the ace. They will take the series and remain undefeated while doing so. Our grand final is going to be a New South Wales affair as the University of New South Wales will take on the University of Sydney. And again with another hard fought but yet decisive victory for the UCID side as like you said they go undefeated in this tournament so far and they are in a great spot